Congratulations to you two. Uh, really, like when you found out about this story or got the script, what was your initial reaction? Are you believers? Well, first off, like I had seen Insidious and I loved Insidious and I thought the script was great and I love scary movies. So I was just completely down for the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, if you're an actor, you have to be a believer in every in every script, whether it's, you know, true or not, because that's, that's your job. You've got to go tell the story to, to the audience and let them have that experience. There is an added element when, because uh, some of them, it's like there's an acceptance of like, oh, this is fiction, and we all know this is fiction, and there you go. This one, all the major players involved feel that this is a thing that really happened. You know, this is their experience, and uh, so I think we're trying to honor that. Yeah, and uh, and present it that way to the audience. Ultimately, the audience is gonna different people are gonna come in, but I'll guarantee you the the hardest you know most scientific minded skeptic in the world after seeing this movie is gonna be a little nervous getting out of his car in a dark driveway. Yeah. You know? Well, for me, I mean, it was The Exorcist that scared the shit out of me. I mean, what was it for <laughs> you? What was the first film? Do you remember? Um, I think I think Exorcist for me. It's it's my it's. Yeah, I mean, this is coming, this is maybe going to rise above it. I remember The Shining. The Shining was the one that got, that got me earliest. Yeah, they're ugh, scary stuff. Yeah. Um, having somebody like Lorraine Warren, I guess, at your fingertips to have around, did you guys take advantage of like sitting down and talking to her to get her real-life experience, or was it important maybe not to talk to her so much? The latter for me, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I felt like Patrick and Vera had to, you know, that was their thing, and... Um, it just didn't feel right to go. It was from a distance, a nice, you know, respect. But especially if I'm possessed, I wasn't comfortable being around a Ghostbuster. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it just was like I'm possessed. I don't, I don't want to go with someone who's gonna unpossess me. You know. Your first job in a scary movie for the first thirty pages is to not know you're in a scary movie. That's part of the fun. Is that the audience has, you know, they've seen the poster and they see the credit sequence, so they have an inkling of what's gonna happen. But the characters really have no idea what they're in for. So, you know, it makes it a little tricky, but you want to sort of prepare to know as little as possible about what's going on so it can all take you by surprise. Yeah. You take a beating in this movie yeah. like I've never yeah. seen before. What kind of prep did you have to do to even get psychologically prepared for this role? Sure. Um, well, vocally, I had to figure out a way to scream without killing my voice, so I had to do a whole vocal thing. So I had some vocal exercises. Um, I knew I needed to be in shape, and um, and I knew I needed to do warm-ups and uh, eat right, sleep right. Really like a physical thing, like a marathon, really, like a training. You know, that's what it was. And I felt totally up to it. I was totally fine, you know. Yeah, wow. It was, wow. I mean, what was it like watching her go through well, some of these scenes? I'll tell you, it was a big part of the reason that I, I was excited to sign on and do this movie. One, because I saw Insidious. And two, because I knew that Lily, when I signed on, Lily was already on board to play this role. It's a pivotal role in the thing, you know what I mean? That's not, it's not easy work to do, and if it's not good, I knew she would be. Yeah, you both were saying about how much you loved Insidious, you'd seen it, and you know, what is it about James Wan and that brain? Like, good he is question. so good at this stuff. Yeah, really is. his whole team, and I think there's something that he really caught on to is, is when you find when you find a good thing, you stick with it. Yeah. He has worked with the designers on this. Cinematographer. Uh, phenomenal, his editor, his cinematographer. He, he's a collaborator, he really yeah. is, and I think that's part of what, he, what makes him great, is he knows how to listen to others. Um, but he, he knows the psyche really well, I think. I think he knows humans, you know? And I think he also is going from himself. He says if, if he doesn't get scared, and while well, he's working on the script, he, he keeps redoing it until he's scared working on the script. So he's putting himself empathy. He's got empathy. That's one of the things. Yeah. And when you're working on a film like this, does anything creepy actually happen on set? Not on this one. Um... Not on this one. I think we had a guardian angel going into this one. I was saying earlier, it's like I had a little thing where a week before I left, I, I fell down, on, I fell off a ladder and down a flight of stairs. And I, halfway down the stairs, I was like, all right, I, I'm probably not going to be able to go do this movie when I land because I don't know what's going to... And I was fine. So I think after that, I felt like, all right, you know, 
somebody's looking out for me. I, I think I, I, I got off easy on this one. I had, th had that feel. I think a lot of those stories you hear a lot of times when the director's not well, uh, you know, Coppola, Apocalypse Now, Friedkin, Exorcist, James is, is really stable, you know, and, and, and that it's like daddy or mommy, our parent, is running a really sound household. You it's know? part of the lore of both this movie and the vampire movies, or something that uh, you know those spirits have to be. You get they have to be invited in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we told this story, but we were very, very careful about not inviting anything. Yeah. In. We wouldn't have gotten our job done, really. You don't we want only had done. thirty days or something, not yeah. a year. Yeah, no, no pussy putting around. Yeah, right, one. exactly. Okay, you had five great young actresses playing your daughters. Amazing. Yeah. Gift. Uh, really, each one was better than the next. They were all yeah. so amazing. How yeah. on earth, you know, listen, I get it. You're making a movie, but really, were they not creeped out? Like, how did you guys keep them, com you know, comfortable? They kept us comfortable. Yeah. Really, I'm not kidding. It's that kid spirit. It's that It's that. Uh, that resiliency, that ability to just move on. They're playing games. They're full of joy. They're singing. You know, they helped the crew. Yeah. We didn't have to help them. Yeah, they brought kind of a life and an energy to it. And they took care of each other, too. I was really proud yeah. that, you know, especially the two older girls who, you know, they're, they're like adult young women and, right. and uh, working a 12-hour day. And at the end of the day, they would take the little girls, you know, back to their rooms and play games with them or go, go out to dinner with them and stuff. And I hope just, they didn't play clap clap. No, no clap, I don't think clap, they played clap, clap clap. No, there was oh, patty yeah. cake, but no clap yeah. clap. <laughs> yeah, okay. That game is no more. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's been ruined. I don't think I could ever play. I've never even heard of that, but I don't think I'd ever in my life now want to no. play that game. Exactly. My goodness. Um, so, you know, you both have been making films for a little while here, but sure. I'm going to ask you first, Lily, what was the role that changed your life? Mine, um, there wasn't one. I mean, I, I, I can't, I don't, I, there wasn't one. I mean, there was some that I, like, I shed into Warhol was a very collaborative experience and it, fulfilling, but... Arizona Dream with Amir Teresa took a year and that so I each one is special to me yeah. like a child you know yeah how about for you Ron they all do a little bit you know I know that's kind of a cop out answer but they all I, if you're doing it right there's no reason to do a, any there's no reason to play a part unless it's going to change your life somehow right you know there was one call I'll pick one that uh, called Holly that I think was uh, that kind of was a dramatic drastic mm -hmm. shift but uh, and but this one was uh, you know I wouldn't have expected that this one would change my life in the way it did, but it really did. Yeah. Very quickly, did you ever want to go back and visit the real house? No. No, I don't play with that stuff. It's not yeah. a joke to me. No way. Yeah. No, I don't need to. Yeah, you've been there, done that. Yeah. You guys yeah. did a phenomenal job in this movie. Really Thank scared you. the crap out of me. Good. Thank you. Thank you.